In this lecture, I'm going to look at Shannon's capacity in high signal to noise ratios. These are the lecture prerequisites Fourier series 6dB per bit SNR from analog to digital converters, quadrature amplitude modulation, linear modulation, the Nyquist Shannon sampling theorem, and Shannon's capacity. We'll look at ADCs. Again, Shannon's capacity in high SNRs, and the reference for this work is Hartley in 1928. So, for CD audio, consider one channel, it's stereo, but just one channel, what bit rate would be required to send that audio signal? The bit rate would be R in bits per second. The original high frequency audio signal is filtered so that all frequencies are lower than 22,050 hertz. Then they're sampled at a sampling frequency of fs or a period of 1 over ts in seconds per sample. The bit rate, excuse me, the quantization is 16 bits per sample in this quantizer. The bandwidth here, B, is the low-pass bandwidth, it's the band-pass bandwidth, and it's 22,050 hertz. The Shannon-Nyquist sampling theorem states that the sampling frequency here must be greater than two times the maximum frequency contained in this signal. And the maximum frequency contained in this signal is B max, and it's some value slightly less than B. So that here, the sampling frequency, Fs, can actually be 2B, or 2 bp, and it's 44,100 samples per second. So for the CD audio, limited to that audio bandwidth, you sample it at 44,100 samples per second. The CD audio uses 16-bit linear quantizers, linear analog to digital converters. The bit rate required to represent this signal sampled at 44,100 samples per second and 16 bits per sample is here. R is FSB, 44,100 samples per second, 16 bits per sample, giving R is 705,600 bits per second. That is the bit rate required to represent one channel of CD audio with this bandwidth 22,050 hertz and a 16-bit quantizer. Now previously it was shown that the signal to noise ratio per bit that you get out of a quantizer can be represented by this formula here. It was a 6 dB per bit. <clears throat> So if the analog signal is sampled and quantized, then this quantization process can be modeled as just replacing it by a small amount of noise. This was in a previous lecture. The signal to noise ratio in dB is 10 log and base 10 of the signal to noise ratio. And again, in that previous lecture, the signal to noise ratio in dB was shown to be 20 log and base 10 of B plus 10 log and base 10 of 3 over 2. And this is approximately 6.02, or 6 dB per bit. B is the number of bits. For CD audio, it's 16. Giving, and then there was a residual term here that's um, not that not important in the modeling we're doing. So for B equals 16, the signal-to-noise ratio is 96 dB, 6 times 16 approximately. And you could rearrange that according to this and the signal to the, signal to, the SNR would be 10 to the 9.6. Just over a billion. Not on a log scale. Alright, let capital K equal 20 log and base 10 of 2, this term here, which is approximately 6, 6.02. And consequently the SNR in dB would be approximately KB. K is this value in dB per bit and B is the number of bits. And this is true for 
a large number of bits where this residual term becomes unimportant. All right. Shannon's capacity, shown here with an example, Shannon published this work in 1948, that the maximum bit rate you can achieve in a channel with a given bandwidth signal to noise ratio is given by this expression. B is the bandpass bandwidth. SNR is this, the, well, SNR, the signal to noise ratio. This is log in base two. So you put in the bandwidth, the signal to noise ratio, and you get out the bit rate. That's the maximum bit rate you could get through a channel. Shannon derived this, he used random coding bounds. We're, we, we can't derive that here, but I'm just giving some insight into Shannon's capacity formula, but for high signal to noise ratios. So if we just put the numbers in for the same bandwidth and signal to noise ratio as in CD audio, then the bandwidth is 22,050 Hertz and the SNR is 10 to the 9.6. And we get, or Shannon's capacity formula predicts the maximum bit rate you could achieve is 703,185.739 bits per second. It's only really relevant to a few significant digits. But previously, it was shown that the bit rate from CD audio is 705,600 bits per second. And it's no coincidence that these are similar. At high signal-to-noise ratios, such as CD audio, they are similar, and Hartley observed this result in 1928. And it gives some insight into Shannon's capacity formula for high SNRs without going through the random coding bound that Shannon used in 1948. If we actually look at that analysis, Shannon's capacity formula is here. And for high SNRs, sometimes that one is important, but for high SNRs, it's approximately, you can drop the one, approximately. Then SNR, the signal to noise ratio, would be 10 to the SNR and dB divided by 10, shown earlier. And the SNR and dB is KB, the K was about 6 dB per bit, and B is 16 bits. Then we can bring this KB over 10 in front. We get log and base 10 of 2. B is here, 10 is here, log and base 10, log and base 2 of 10 is here. But the K previously was shown to be 20 log and base 10 of 2. And the product of those two logs is 1. 20 over 10 is 2. So we put 2 here with the bandpass bandwidth, and that is the sampling frequency of the CD audio. B is the number of bits in the quantizer, and then we get, well, FS previously was 44,100 samples per second, and 16 bits per sample, we get 705,600 bits per second. So at high SNRs, Shannon's capacity formula predicts a bit rate that is the same as the bit rate required to send CD audio at 6 dB per bit and the bandwidth of CD audio. And so it's an interesting result which gives you some insight into Shannon's capacity formula at high SNRs but only using the 6 dB per bit from analog to digital converters and only using the Nyquist-Shannon capacity, no, excuse me, only using the um, Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem that the sampling frequency has to be greater than two times the maximum bandwidth. Thank you.